Here's a git commit. This is also that same commit. And this is also that same commit. Welcome back to Tommy Codes. In today's episode, I'm gonna be explaining exactly what a commit is in Git. You'll understand it just like a pro. I've got a file in my directory called file.txt. My Git repository has one commit and the contents of file.txt are the string goodbye. We are gonna inspect this commit and we're gonna understand exactly what a commit is. The hash of this commit, which uniquely identifies it, is C3BA2. We know that all of Git's data and state lives in its .git directory, but where do the commits live? Well, a commit is what's called an object, and so we're gonna find it under the .objects directory. So if we list out git objects, we actually won't find the commit directly there. We will see the first two characters of the commit hash, C3, and then under there further, we will see C3 B821, so the remaining suffix of the commit hash. Git does this for performance reasons. You could imagine if you have a very large repository with hundreds of thousands of commits and you stick all of those objects into one directory, now the performance of that directory when you ls it and have to search through it is much lower. If you partition it with these prefixes, things just get a lot easier for Git and things perform a lot better. So that's why they do that. But regardless, there's the object. Why don't we cat it out? Let's see what's inside of it. Looks a little funky. That's not English. It's not Spanish. It's not any language, actually. It's binary data. Git is not storing these objects as raw text. Git is storing these objects as binary. And again, this is for latency reasons, but also storage reasons. Binary is going to use a lot fewer bytes than raw text. That's why Git is doing this. What do we do to actually see the contents of this object? I'm not really that interested in combing through the binary. That's not really my style. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really that into that. What if I told you there's this handy command? It's called git cat file and we can give it the dash p flag which is pretty print and then we can give it b82 we can give it the prefix of the commit and we will see something that looks a lot more readable we're seeing the commit message with the metadata of who wrote it and when it was written and we also see this tree thing so what's going on with this tree thing what's in a tree well git does not actually store diffs git stores full snapshots of the repository in each commit and these snapshots are referred to as trees here and if we look at the tree, which we can do with git ls tree, and we paste in this hash, we will see some blob objects. And we'll also see that the blob objects have file names. So I have a git ignore in this commit, and I also have this file.txt. And then if we git cat file the blob, git cat file dash p, we will actually see the contents of the file. So again, if I cat out file.txt, we'll notice that that's the same. So the contents of file.txt are stored in this blob object, dd7e1. You might be wondering, well, why doesn't the tree, why do we need these blob objects? What's the point of that? And I'll show you in a second. So why don't we actually add a new file? So let's echo hello and put this into file2.txt. And now if we do a git status, we'll notice it's untracked. So we'll add that. And then we're gonna commit and we're gonna say, add file2.txt. And now if we get log, we have this new commit 4945. And so we're gonna do git cat file dash p, git cat file dash p with 4945. And we're gonna see this new tree. This new tree makes sense because now the snapshot of the repository is different. And so we can do is git cat file, or rather git ls tree and paste that in. And we're gonna see that we have the git ignore file.txt and now we have file2.txt. And again, just to show you guys, if I git cat file this with dash p, I get hello. Which that's the same as if I just cat file2.txt like a regular file. That's the contents of file2. But I want us to, but I want us to compare the output of git ls tree for the new commits tree with the old commits tree. And notice how the blob objects for the dot git ignore and file.txt actually have the same hash. And this is why Git uses the blobs. If you think about it, the only thing that actually changed in the snapshot between these two commits was the addition of file2.txt. It doesn't really make sense for Git to store another copy of file.txt if its contents are unchanged. And these blob objects, these pointers to objects, allow Git to do this. And to do another example for you guys, if I actually go into file.txt, and I add an exclamation point to file. So now we'll notice that that's modified. And then I add this and I say modify file.txt. Now let's git log again and grab the hash. Let's git 
cat file dash p. Let's grab the tree, get ls tree, and then again, we are going to compare the outputs of these ls trees. And in these two, which correspond to the first and the second commits, they share the same contents for file.txt. So we'll notice that they both have this dd7e, dd7e. But then in the third commit, we modified file.txt. And now finally, we see that this blob has a new hash. And then again, just to show you guys, git cat file dash p, this has the exclamation points, whereas this one does not. This is how git stores commits. The blob objects allow it to not blow up the disk usage because it's able to store pointers to objects. And git understands if you have a massive file and it doesn't change ever, even if you have hundreds of thousands of commits, it only needs to store the contents of that file one time. And then it can store pointers to those files and the tree objects can sort of wrangle that all together. So this is actually how commits work in Git. If you're wondering where I got all my Git knowledge, once again, I'd like to recommend this amazing book, Pro Git. It's completely free. The authors, thank you guys so much. Scott, Ben, you guys are absolute legends. This book has helped me so much. Every single one of you watching this should read it if you haven't already. I'm not joking. Literally sit down and read this thing cover to cover. You will not regret it. Please let me know in the comments if you've read this book before. I'd love to see if you guys have. And if you haven't, let me know that you're starting it soon. And take a look here for some other videos I've done on Git and other topics. I think you'll enjoy them.